for a journey. Y'all ready to detox? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready to detox. All right, all right. Let us, let us move today. We're going we're gonna to first journey to the book of James, to the book of James. And today's scripture lesson is coming from chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Verses 1 through 12. Now hear these words of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make mista many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking, in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits in our mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes so strong winds to drive them, yet they are guarded by very small, guided by very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of inequity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and itself set on fire by hell. For each species of beast, of bird, of reptile, and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But not one, somebody say, but not one, can tame the tongue. A restless evil full of deadly poison. In other words, it's lethal. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No, more can salt yield fresh. Journey, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us respond by saying, let us pray. Eternal and gracious Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord. Oh God, I need you right now. And oh God, I ask that you will take me from me. And in other words, God, as I decrease, oh Lord, you increase. And oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In your precious and holy name I pray, amen. I want to put a tag on this particular sermon. Of course, we know we're doing a sermon series called Soul Detox. But this particular, this particular sermon today is called Lethal Language. Lethal Language. Now, normally, I wouldn't make this suggestion that we take notes as strongly as I'm going to make that suggestion today. The things that we will be going in these series, doing in these series is very important for our spiritual growth. So I will ask those folks, <coughs> if you would please take notes, that you hear something that may help somebody else, then, then tweet it or post it on Facebook that somebody may be able to see, see or hear some of the words that, that, that we're talking about today when we talk about lethal language. Amen, everybody? I want y'all to say this. I want y'all to finish it with me. Well, I'm going to say it first, and then we'll say it together. And wh wherever you get in, once you figure out, if you know the saying, just jump in wherever you want to jump in. Sticks and stones. But words. Now, let's say it again 
like you've had to say that before. Now, maybe I'm the only one who got picked on or bullied before. And I know this was something my great-grandmother told me to learn. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt me. How many of y'all believe that? I've heard some things that have hurt me. I've said some things to other folks that I've hurt. And understand, if you didn't have to say that sometime in your life, well, then you've been bullying folks for a long time, so we got a whole other prayer for you. But understand where this rhyme has come from. It showed up in England in the early 1800s. So it's not, it's, it's relatively new. And we trace back from some notes, and, and the Christian recorder was a paper by the Af African Methodist Episcopal Church, and they had this saying back in 1862. So bullying is nothing new. But anytime we say that we say this and we want to believe this, and this may be the thing that we need to say at that particular time to get us to the next place in our lives, but sometimes at the point those words will revisit you and rehaunt you, and you remember what that person said to you. Words. Words hurt. Words. I went and I, I Googled some of the most hurtful words and phrases that people say to other people. And here's some of the ones that, that came up. Loser. Stupid. Dumb. Ugly. Retarded. You're never going to amount to anything. I wish you were never born. I wish you were dead. I hate you. I never loved you anyway. I wish I had never married you. Very hurtful words. So no matter how many times you can say that rhyme that Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt you. And sometime those words will come back and revisit you, and they will haunt you, and you will realize that these words did hurt. So James is warning us today, and he's talking about the taming of our tongues. Many of us don't know this, but we need to realize that the tongue has power. This little organ, this little red organ that has eight muscles is a small thing, but it, can, but, it, but it can incur much damage. The tongue has no bones, but it's strong enough to break a person's heart. That's tweetable. Do you control your tongue? Or does your tongue control you? Do you control your tongue? Or does your, tongue, your tongue control you? Is your tongue your friend? Or is your tongue your enemy? I've heard people say, well, I'm just being me. I've heard people say, I'm just going to keep it 100. Somebody needs to say something, but sometimes keeping it real can go wrong. Sometimes we just need to just shut up. I remember now, I'm going to date myself. There was a song by one of my favorite groups, one of my hip-hop groups. That was back when you could actually understand what they were saying when they were rapping. I'm sorry, young folks. Y'all got the, what, three amigos? What? The Migos, yeah, the Migos, but I'm saying they had a song said, you talk too much. You never shut up. You talk too much. Homeboy, you never shut up. Sometimes you just got to what? You got to hold your peace. Everything don't need to be said all the time. Matter of fact, 
Matter of fact, I, I, I did some research, uh, this, 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 this Harvard business model, and it talks about on productive teams, and it gives the ratio. It's a little bar graph that gives the ratio of how many positive inputs it takes to negate one negative input. For an example, and it says right here, it says it takes 5.6 positive comments for one negative comment. So that makes it equal. So if I come up here and you say, hey, Minister Quick, I like your jacket. I like your cross. I like your beads. But I don't like your shoes. I'm leaving that conversation in a negative because that was only four positive for that one negative. Now, if you said one more thing and then you say, well, you know, I don't like your shoes, it makes a difference. You understand the power of the tongue. So no, no, whatever, we shouldn't be afraid to maybe give negative or criticize, but make sure that you're putting in more than you're taking away because understand, when you, when you say my shoes is bad, you done took away something from me. And that's just your opinion anyway. Tame the tongue. If you can't control the tongue, then you probably can't control the rest of your body. If you can't control what comes out of your mouth, then you can't control the rest of your body. If we could just understand the importance of taming this little red organ with, these, with those eight muscles, then our whole lives could change. Keeping it real. <laughs> Keep it 100 we sometimes we need to just what? Shut up. The, the tongue has, I'm going to use four different things. The power, the tongue has the power. One of the things the tongue has the power to do is direct. The tongue has the power to direct. Now James lifts up two very good illustrations. He's, he's talking about, the first illustration he talks about a bit in a horse's mouth. He says if we put bits in the mouths of horses so they can obey us, we can guide our whole body as well. It's a relatively small piece of metal that can tr control a 2,000-pound beast. So understand, now how many, any, anybody have any horses? Nobody, anybody about horses? Anybody? A bride? Bridal? Okay, Ricky. So you understand that that, that that piece of metal that's in that horse's mouth, no, that's not a grill. That's a metal that controls the horse. So when you want to go left, then you pull the bride to the left, and the horse goes that way. And if you want to go right, you pull the bride to the, to, to the right, and he goes that way. And if you want the horse to stop, you just pull back on the bride, and the horse obeys that little, that little bit in that horse's mouth directs the horse in which way it could go. Without that, that, that bit in his mouth, then the horse would go where the horse wanted to and we could not control the horse, how the horse behaves because someone needs to direct the horse on which way the horse should go. Now, if you've ever been on a ship or a boat, now James is using, he's talking about these huge ships and how they need strong winds to carry them. Absolutely. They need strong winds to carry them, but that little rudder, I don't know anybody, any boat people, anybody have a boat or know about boats, that rudder, that little piece of, of metal or wood that controls the whole boat. So if you want to go left, you just merely turn the wheel and that rudder moves and it turns the whole ship. A little piece of rudder controls the big ship. In other words, James is telling us and saying that the tongue needs some direction for control. Now understand how important this is. James uses a whole chapter. If you get time, read chapter 3 to talk about the tongue. Of all the things he could have written about, he used a whole entire chapter to talk about the tongue. Number two, the tongue has the power to destroy. It destroys relationships. 
families, people, it, in, it destroys the church. But I understand that sometimes we may have grown up in an environment where we were always poured negative things into us. Because if, if it was poured into you, that's all you know. You're going to pour it into your children. And your children are going to pour it into somebody else. So before you know it, you have a generations and generations of people who are just negative about everything. Because you're going to be what you see. You can tell your kids what they shouldn't do. Like I know somebody was just telling me the other day. They said, look, my parents would send us to church, but they wouldn't go to church. Son, you need to get up. You need to go to church. Why they're, they're standing in the bed watching St. Sheets. That's not a very good way to raise kids. They're going to be what they see. But hurt, you know, the thing about hurt people, though, what is it saying? Hurt people hurt people. I don't know, but you may have seen this. You may have seen this recently. There was a 10-year-old young boy from Kentucky. His name was Seven Bridges. Seven was born with a birth defect that caused him to have a coloscopy bag to go to school. Well, he had been making it hearing all this, all these things, you know, all these things that people were saying about him. I guess he probably said that saying a couple of times himself. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, after all the, the ridicule that he got from the kids, one day, Seven's mother found him in the closet where he had took his own life. Understand the tongue. Life or death. Because of the tongue. And, and ironically, that was the eighth suicide at that school this year. And this was in January. The eighth suicide. So understand this. I confess that I have bullied, I have bullied people in terms of saying negative things and saying things. I confess that I've done it. And I know how bad it felt to get done that way. But the truth of the matter is, understand the words have the power to destroy the words. Your words have the power to, to just break a person down to where this person feels so low, so helpless, that a person would take their own life. I want to share a story um, about Something that happened to me when I was in sixth grade. One of my best friends, James Daniels. I didn't understand leukemia in the sixth grade. All I know is James would be out of school a lot, and I would miss him. He'd come back. We'd sit by each other. But he was my friend, one of my best friends. Well, one day he was coming in, and some boys started picking at him about his head hair loss. He had lost all his hair because of the chemotherapy that he was taking. And they kept picking at him. And one day, he had on a hat. And one of the boys snatched his hat off. And I was there laughing with them. This was my friend. Instead of being the one that came in and said, you need to shut up, I was laughing. Two weeks later, the teacher called us all in and said she had some news to tell us. And she said, I'm sorry to inform you, but James passed away. And to this day, it still bothers me. The look on his face of betrayal when I watched these people tongue lash him. No, I didn't understand what leukemia was, but I knew what picking, up, picking on people was wrong. But yet, I still did it because of the crowds. What I came to tell you is, the tongue has the power to destroy. And if you're the only one that's willing to stand up and fight for somebody because they're bullying somebody, then you need to stand up and say what needs to be said. 
The tongue has the power to destroy. Also, the tongue has the power to deflect. James says in, in chapter 1, verses, verse 19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Say, let's say these, say these together. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. True story. Me and my, my, my best friend, uh, who was my, my best man at my wedding, we were at a Gamecocks game maybe 10, 15 years ago. It was when they were losing real bad because he, he actually played Ken Watson, uh, four-year start at USC. But so, so you know, we, we coming from the game. Now, Wide is about 6'2". You know, he's a big guy. I'm a big guy. So afterwards, we were walking to the car. And when we got to the car, he loves it. He had a Toyota 4Runner, man. He loved that truck. When we were coming to the truck, we saw three look like high school boys. I mean, they were camped out, picnicking kind of sort of on the truck. So we could see them from a distance. I could already see um, uh, Ken. He was already getting upset. I I said, man, the Gamecocks lost. He ready to go home. We got to fight this traffic. He's ready. He, he's in that mode. I can see him. And, and, you know, I'm with him. So I said, well, I got to get in that mode too. So we're walking. You know you know how you walk me, mugging. And as we got closer to the truck, something hit my spirit. It was like, hold up. Because I would think that it was three young boys, two adult, grown, big men that are coming toward my truck, that's a mismatch. They going to lose. But for some reason, they didn't move. I mean, they was all on the hood like this. And so, so I was like, wait a minute, why? Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. I said, man, hey, we need to approach this slow. So we went to the truck. Now here's this big 6'2", former Gamecock, former NFL player, talking to some little probably high school boys, like, hey, man, do y'all mind if I get my truck? Now, at the moment, I felt like, wow, we're, we're saying this to these, these young boys? But I said, yeah, man, yo, man, hey, you know, we tried to, you know, make small talk, and they said, they kind of nodded and said, yeah. So as they were getting up, I saw the weapon. Each one of them, they were ready. All we had to do was say the wrong thing. And I probably wouldn't be here right now. Now, I don't know if it was them, but later on in the news, I heard that some people were shooting at the USC tailgate that day. It perhaps could have been them. I don't know. But if we had just, just followed what we felt or followed the anger, if we didn't understand how to hold our tongue so we can deflect that situation, that situation could have got ugly. Sometimes keeping it real goes wrong. Yeah, I may have felt a little small then, but I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. But understand Proverbs 15 and 1 says, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word, a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue has the power to deflect. The tongue also has the power to delight. The power to delight. Our tongues also have the power to delight. Verses 9 through 10 lays out the nature of our tongues. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, these things ought not be so. The word bless comes from where we get the word eulogy. 
Eulogy means to speak well of. We bless the Lord while we blast the people made in God's image. Some of us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then within minutes, we pulverize someone made in his image. Out of that same mouth, there's a blessing and a cursing. But what we've learned today, what we've learned today, that we've learned that we must control our tongues. Because if we don't control our tongues, our tongues will control us. They have the power to direct. The tongue has the power to destroy. The tongue has the power to delight. So we got to put it into practice. In other words, are y'all ready to detox? If you're ready, if you're ready to detox, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Because understand, it's not easy, it's not easy, it's not easy to detox. But detox shows, when you can control your mouth, it shows your level of spiritual maturity. Sometimes you just got to hold, hold your mouth. And if that don't work, just remember what Run DMC said. Sometimes you just got to shut up. But the power to the light. So we're going we're gonna to put into practice some of the things that we've learned today because we're going to understand that we must tame this tongue. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this acronym called THINK. Everybody say THINK. And we're going to ask, we want you to ask five questions before you speak. Five questions. Y'all got it? The first thing is, is it true? Is it true? We can't just pop off about something if it ain't true. Like if somebody said, Martin, somebody just bust your windows out your car. Well, I need to find out if it's true before I start to go off. Now, if I find out it's true, God help my bright on my tongue. But we have to find out, number one, is it true? The second one is the H, is it helpful? One of the things that Wesley said was do no harm. Is it helpful for me to say what I need to say right now? Now, that takes spiritual maturity to be able to discern when to say something and when not to. But ask yourself, huh, is this helpful? Third thing, is it inspiring? Are we saying something to make, put, like, like James talks about the spark, the fire. Are we putting gas on the fire? Are we putting water on the fire? Because you know, we got some people, what I call booster cables. They like to boost it up. You remember when back in the days when it, when it was time to fight, so we, we put our hand out, best man hit me, and then you hit the other person and go back, you know, because you wanted to get it off and, and, and popping. So, so that's one of the things we need to ask ourselves, is it inspiring? And the end in that think is, is it necessary? Do you have to say that? Does it need to be said? Is it necessary? Can it, is there a better way? Sometimes silence speaks louder than words. Like when my wife says, no, I understand that. Just like when she says, no. So there's different ways in which we're able to communicate. And the last one in that think is, is it kind? Is it kind? There's a way to even criticize somebody in a way to do it with love. The way to do it with love. Is it kind? And also, related to this, let's make sure that we watch our words on Facebook, <coughs> Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Because once they're out there, you can't bring them back. No apology can wipe away the pain of some of the things that you say to people. You may say, I'm sorry. They may say, I forgive you. 
But those words revisit you. They shape you. They form you. Whether or not you have low self-esteem, high self-esteem, confidence, all comes about what you're hearing people say. That's why the Lord gave us two ears and one mouth. Whatever comes in, because even when, hey, how, how do we grow? By hearing the word of God. By hearing. So sometimes we just have to listen and discern whether or not this is the right time to say this. Now, from moving on to, to detox, as we begin to detox, we're beginning to detox. Psalms 19 and 14 says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So this psalm is followed by, it said, it's asking, it's a prayer. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock, the rock that you sometimes need to lean on before you speak. Sometimes you need to say, Lord, help me with my mouth right now. You need to assess the situation and say, Lord, should I, should I not say something? You need to say, Lord, my rock. Somebody said something to me. Maybe I need to go the other day. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You can't detox by yourself. But you got a rock and a redeemer in order to help you because speech is a powerful thing. What you can do with your mouth is more powerful than anything you can do with your fist. Your mouth can do more damage than anything you can do with your fist. That's why sometimes men get upset and they want to go be, punch a woman. Those words hurt more to them and so they do something real stupid and try to punch because they don't, they don't have the, the words of eating it and just eating at them. They don't know how, how, how to control themselves. But, 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 but James is telling us if we hurt someone, the tongue is so much more effective than the fist, if we want to apologize, all the flowers in the world won't accomplish anything bigger than those two words, I'm sorry. Some of the most significant messages people deliver to one another has often come with three words. Three words. Words have the power to Forge new friendships, deepen old ones, and restore relationships. We're getting ready to detox. One of the three words, somebody say three words. One of the three words that we can put into this atmosphere is I'll be there. Being there for a person is a great gift that we can give when we're truly present with people. For other people, important things happen to them and us. We are renewed in love relationships, we are restored, restored emotionally and spiritually. Another three words we can say is, I miss you. More marriages and friendships can be salvaged and strengthened if people simply, sincerely said to each one of each other, I miss you. This is an affirmation that tells your partners that they are wanted, they are needed, they are desired, and they are loved. Three more words, we're detoxing. I respect you. Respect is another way of showing love and the feeling that another person is truly equal. A powerful way to affirm the importance of a relationship. Another, maybe you're right. This phrase is highly effective in diffusing an argument and restoring free frayed, frayed emotions. The flip side is, maybe you're right, is the humility of admitting maybe I'm wrong. Please forgive me. Many broken relationships can be stored and healed if we would just admit to our mistakes and ask for forgiveness. All of us are vulnerable to faults. All of us are vulnerable to failures. A person should never be ashamed to admit that they have been wrong, which is saying that they are wiser today than they were yesterday. We're detoxing. I thank you. Gratitude is an exquisite form of courtesy. People who enjoy the companionship of good, close friends aren't those who don't take courtesies for granted. They are quick to thank their friends for the many expressions of kindness. People whose circle of friends is severely limited often do not have an attitude of gratitude. 
Detox. Count on me. A friend is someone who walks in when other alts walks out. Detox. Three words. Let me help. The best of friends sees a need and tries to fill it. I understand you. People become closer and enjoy each other more if they can have person accepts and understands them. Seek first, understand. Second, to be what? Understood. Three words, detox, go for it. Some of our friends may be non-conformist, but tell them go for it. Three little words. Three little words. You are enough. Never give up. But I, 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 I like I said, we're detoxing, but we want to we wanna really come out of this thing. We want to really come out. But, but, but God has given us some words. He's given us this language. But if we really want to come out and we want to start speaking blessings right now, we want to start detoxing, we want to start speaking blessings right now. No curses, blessings. We want to bless one another. We want to lift up one another. We want to bless one another. We want to shift this atmosphere right now in this church because there's somebody that came today who's down on their luck. Somebody came today feeling worthless. Somebody dead today came knowing that somebody has, has poured all kinds of evil into their lives. Somebody came here maybe on their last leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to speak blessings and we're going to speak life until Journey Church. So what I want you to do, if you believe that you can speak blessings and you can speak life, I want you to say to somebody, I love you. But wait a minute. I don't want you to just say I love you because they got a name tag on them. I want you to say whoever it is. Say, Dave, I love you. And what I want us to do for about one minute, I want us to raise the blessings. I want us to put life into these people in this church. So for the next minute, I want you to find somebody and just say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Find somebody, Journey. Find somebody, Journey. Find somebody, Journey. Find somebody. If you truly want to detox, if you truly feel it in your heart, find somebody, anybody, everybody, and say, I love you. Brandon, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You are enough. I love you. I love you. I love you. We speak in life. We speak in blessings. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. I love you. I love you, Journey. I love you. I love you. I want to say, please, I love you. Adrian, I love you. I love you. I love you. Blessings, I love you. Blessings. Blessings. Detox. Detox. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. You need to come out right at this time. I love you, I love you. I love you. Come out. We need to come out. Yes, sir. It's time to detox. Tell somebody, I love you. It's time to detox. It's time to detox. It's time to come out. The tongue has the power to bless, curse, life, death. But we're detoxing. And I want you to continue the spirit, not just today, but we need to detox so it becomes our spirit, so it becomes automatic. That we bless folk. It's time to come out, Journey. It's time. It's time to detox. It's time to detox.